Hi, I'm Sarah from Heirloom Creations, and at a recent Zootopia Sewing Club, we featured monograms. Now, monograms can come in so many different shapes and sizes, from small on your cuff to something big that you use, a font from your computer to give you inspiration. So, just to take you back a little ways, back in uh, high school, I got to work for a commercial embroidery company. And next door, we had Nordstrom's, and every day, a gentleman from Nordstrom's would walk over in a nice suit and tie and drop off a bag of men's dress shirts for me to monogram. And the next day he came back to pick them all up. But I learned very quickly where monograms were to be placed, how they're supposed to be positioned, and I'll never forget the day that, well, First off, monograms are supposed to be read by the person that you are visiting, not by the person wearing it. And all of a sudden, one day, the embroidery machine didn't start where it was supposed to start. Normally, it started at this side, and all of a sudden, it went over here. Well, what I had done is accidentally rotated it the wrong way, quickly stopping it, realizing my mistake, taking out those few stitches, fixing it. Of course, this is like a $100 men's shirt, got it fixed, and properly placed. That was my first time embroidering monograms. But I don't know about you, but my first time seeing a monogram was on Laverne and Shirley. So Laverne and Shirley, she always had that beautiful L on her shirt and was always properly placed. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. I've got a variety of little things to walk you through different types of embroidery and things you can do with your home sewing machine that are associated with monograms. Let's just start off with this here. This is a towel that we took and stitched a monogram. Now so many times embroiderers think, oh my goodness, what if I goof the towel? I'll have to buy another one. Well, this is placed and stitched on regular fabric, so the fabric is then perfected and then appliqued to the towel. Super easy, you get it exactly the way you want it, and now you have a beautiful set of matching items. There was even a little washcloth with just the little accent ribbon band on it. Behind me was actually something I did for my daughter's room and hung it above the changing table. So her name is Kate, and I went ahead and found on my computer a font that I I liked and I blew it up probably 300 400 point and printed it off on a single piece of paper now if you're going to print things that you're going to applique you need to print them in reverse or once you print them work from the opposite side because if you're going to fuse them on remember things get flipped so just so your letters come out the right way remember there's some mirror imaging that have to go on before you do it this was actually made in such a way I put some extra little pockets here so I kept little toys or a book and things that I need to reach for that were small that she could actually play with and we kept everybody entertained. Another thing that I recently was playing with was a variety of monogram styles done with the Viking and Bernina software. So they have some unique things that you just type in your letters. So a monogram traditionally is your last name is in the middle. If it's a husband and wife, then you have her first initial on the right side and his on the left side, and then you go ahead and have fun with it. And with the softwares, they just have you put in the letters. You can do a one letter monogram, two letter or all three letters, and then it has you pick a border, pick a style, pick a font, pick this, pick that, and you just go through the little list and pick out something, and at the end, you have lots of different options. Now, I also have a link to my Pinterest board that has tons of monograms on it, so follow this blog link below this YouTube video for additional things and close-up pictures of these particular projects. Another thing that you see done with monograms is maybe your Greek letters. So this is actually done, this is a plaid lettering done from embroideryonline.com. Uh, what's really nice is this is thread, not fabric, and so you can customize the colors that you might like. You, there's both regular alphabets, though, 26 letters, and also Greek alphabets. That was done on a sweatshirt. Now, this is actually a monogram in another language. No, I have no idea what this actually says. So um, it's just kind of fun. It is kind of classy the way the characters symbolize something. This is actually a leftover sample from something I did for a friend. Um, it's just a really pretty uh, letter and border that I found, and this spelled out an entire banner that was appropriate for the event that I gave it to. And this is stitched up with gold metallic thread on this gorgeous red tapestry fabric. Now this hangs in my office. One year, I, I kind of say each year I come up with a different theme 
a, a word that will help me kind of stay focused through the year. And one year, it was balance. I just love this font. This also has some paper piece little decorations up here. But this, to this day, still hangs above my computer where I work and do all my video editing and blog posts and everything. This is actually something I found on Pinterest using burlap. You can fuse one of those gigantic letters onto and like do it as a, an outdoor banner. You might hang in your garden. You could do it with letters or you could even do it without letters that are fabric and just use a, let's see here, that would be a, like a Sharpie marker and then hang it on a little stand there. Now, I came across this realizing it's not done yet, but looking forward to finishing it. Now, these were blocks that were given to me when Kate was born. Uh, our Setopia Sewing Club stitched out. These must finish out about uh, four inches or so blocks, and there's a whole bunch of them. Well, I was got to looking at one of the ways you can do monograms is with paper piecing, and there's a cute little K right over here that is paper pieced and stitched in. There was also some other paper piece letters, but it's just kind of fun. I had fun putting this all together. So I'll go ahead and get that um, quilted up. I picked out a back and binding and a little extra border to make a little bit wider for the finished results. So even though it's kind of cute and small, she loves pink, so how can you go wrong? The scarf that I'm wearing actually has the monogram put on it, so we went ahead and got that all um, custom made for the kind of the darker gray that we've got going on here. Um, this is just fun. This is a, a monogram somebody gave me. It is a book that they cut, and I still love it. Um, found Kate reading it the other day. Um, it is a Reader's Digest, but she, you know, these days we don't have as many, we have books that are for children's books, but we don't have as many big, solid, hardback books like we used to on shelves. You know, a lot of the things I read, I download, so we don't have these extra books sitting around. So she was just amazed and looking at the few pictures and a lot of the words, um, trying to read it. I don't think she was really getting the gist of it since most of it was cut out, but very cool idea and um, great like gift for somebody that collects a lot of letters and things. Now, another thing that we've done, we did this in our Cutwork Zootopia a couple months ago where we did some linens and did a beautiful cut out of the fabric to create the letters letters here. Another thing, oh, back to the paper piecing. We do find that you can find paper piece letters. You can size them up or down on your computer when you hit print. Once again, for example, this F, you got to remember you got to flip that one too so you get the correct look when you're done. Because remember, paper piecing, you work on the back side and then you have your final thing coming through. Um, this letter is an A, so it doesn't really make a big difference. Another thing that you can find patterns for are the like can koozies. That'd be another great place to put a monogram. Uh, those can be stitched in a variety of different fabrics. Um, you can also buy blank koozies. Um, they're in this particular shape, but there's all sorts of making your own if you'd like. This is something that I pulled out of our embroidery box. Uh, these are his and hers, backup stockings. You never know when you might have to have a few extra round for uh, guests that get stuck in your area. But uh, this would be another fun thing that you can do that doesn't actually have a monogram that would be specific and not for one person. At least you got a, two people you can accommodate with that one. Now, a couple more things here. One thing that I've done a lot with, I love, is from Anita Good Design. They have a lot of project CDs. For example, this one is the drawstring bags. These are drawstring bags that are actually all done in the embroidery hoop. But they have like fun things like, um, they got an owl and they got hearts and they got like kind of little gifty things. So something for babies, something for Christmas, something for Halloween. There's a little Halloween treat bag one. But instead, instead of stitching out the finished design, you still could use the um, bag part, the drawstring bag, but then substitute in your own little section. And then you too have the drawstring bag, but with your own front. Same thing for like coasters. A lot of times you find patterns that embroider coasters and they're Christmas or they're this um, theme. And you're like, well, why not? Just put on a nice quick monogram, substitute that out when it goes and starts stitching that design. This is uh, Christmas coasters. Has it? They come out either square or round, so you can 
add in your monograms there. And then this one was actually a fun one, the Anita's card holder. Now what it is by a card holder is on the back side there's these little pockets for like gift cards or maybe your shopping cards that you go to frequent stores with. But on this side is the monogram. So with this you get all 26 letters done in this very unique ornate lettering style. And then the directions and pockets of how you actually put this together because this satin stitch that goes around the final outside actually connects both the front and the back together and this was wash away stabilizer so once you wash it away you have the perfect project all done when you pull it out of the hoop. So these are just a couple fun things that we do at our Sotopia Sewing Club. Monograms are something that you should take a look at. You see them a lot now on baby wear, very popular, a little bit more um, refined, you might say, putting a baby's monogram on than just their name. And so take a look. I think you'll be able to see monograms showing up in a, mo a lot more places than you realize. Thanks for watching and check out our blog for additional details.